His name is John Cena! John Cena's time at the top of WWE was divisive among fans, and apparently other performers too. These superstars may have had hustle, but no loyalty to or respect for Big Match John. The feud between John Cena and The Rock was one for the ages, and their clash at WrestleMania 28 stands as the most successful WrestleMania main event of all time in terms of pay-per-view buys. Part of why it was so engaging was that the two men used their real-life animosity to further the feud. Their hostility had begun long before their WrestleMania rivalry, as Cena had openly questioned The Rock's love for the business in shoot interviews years prior, implying The Rock was just using WWE to catapult himself into Hollywood. When The Rock did return to WWE, he openly buried John Cena in his first promo. This was probably part of the planned storyline, but as the feud continued, the comments began to feel more and more real. Cena would even call out The Rock for having notes on his arm during an in-ring promo, and The Rock looked visibly irritated. The Rock even claimed that the two almost came to blows backstage, saying their tension was making a lot of people uncomfortable behind the scenes. According to referee Mike Chioda, Cena was upset about having to lose his first match with The Rock, claiming he has worked too hard to lose to a part-timer. In recent years, Cena has admitted he was wrong in his animosity towards The Rock. Cena would also go on to do everything he says he hated The Rock for, himself becoming a film actor and a part-time WWE superstar. Mr. Kennedy had a memorable run in WWE, but his backstage heat during that run appeared to be one of the reasons he left the company while still in his prime. Kennedy famously had some bad blood with two of the company's biggest stars, Randy Orton and John Cena. The heat with Cena came from a match the two had in 2007, in which Kennedy encouraged the fans to boo Cena. Legendary commentator Jim Ross explained the situation on his podcast, Grilling JR, saying, but Yeah, I did ruffle uh, Cena's feathers. Cena took it personally and thought, okay, enough's enough. Ross went on to explain why it was a bad call on Kennedy's part. To encourage the audience by your rhetoric to boo the appointed number one babyface in the company is not wise. You don't do anything to chip away at the image or the standing of a John Cena in this case, or anyone else in that top babyface role. You just don't do it. It's counterproductive. It's not being cute. It's not being funny. It's not just being a heel. On the Two Man Power Trip podcast in 2022, Mr. Kennedy said he had spoken to Randy Orton and had squashed their beef, but hasn't spoken to Cena to squash theirs. Like, I've never spoken to John since, uh, since leaving. Gabby Tuft previously wrestled in WWE as Tyler Rex. Her finisher was the Burning Hammer, and many thought the way she did the move was similar to the way John Cena did his finisher, the Attitude Adjustment. When Cena first saw how Tuft used the Burning Hammer, he wasn't happy. Speaking to Wrestling Inc. in 2014, Tuft said, I come backstage all excited and John grabs me in front of everyone and says, what do you think you're doing? I thought I told you to get a new finisher. I said, yeah, I thought you were joking, John. We hit it wrong last night. I'm really sorry. He belittled me, called me an idiot, and asked me if I enjoyed working here. I told him, of course I do. He told me, find another finisher or you're fired. I was humiliated. Tuft tried to apologize afterwards, but Cena still didn't let it go. Humiliating Tuft once more, she said, he and I never really talked after that. In 2011, Chavo Guerrero Jr. went to Twitter to voice his disdain for Cena. He asked fans if they were tired of Cena, and fans overwhelmingly said they were indeed tired of him. Chavo would then compare himself to Cena, saying, Now, my opinion, Cena is better than me on the mic, but I could out-wrestle Cena with my eyes closed and one hand tied behind my back. Truth. In a 2014 interview with Fox News Latino, Guerrero continued to insult Cena's wrestling ability, saying, If he can't wrestle, then he can't wrestle. You know, very, very few and far between do we get a Triple H or a Rey Mysterio, a Randy Orton. That doesn't happen too much anymore. It's very few and far between. You can tell who's making John Cena look good. In another 2011 tweet, Guerrero threatened, If Cena breaks the great Ric Flair's 16-time champ record, I will never watch wrestling again. I call a boycott of Cena matches if he does. Cena would go on to match Flair's record in 2017, though it appears Guerrero still watches wrestling nevertheless. But I'm afraid I've got some bad news. One of the most infamous moments of the Super Cena era was at SummerSlam 2010, when John Cena essentially beat the Nexus single-handedly. Fans and even some fellow WWE superstars hated the moment. Edge and Chris Jericho both reportedly fought against Cena's complete burial of a hot new act. 
Wade Barrett, the leader of the Nexus, seemed on the cusp of greatness and could have easily become a main event heel had the Nexus been booked stronger. Barrett fueled speculation of backstage heat between himself and Cena in 2011 during an interview with German radio station M94.5 when he said, Then there are guys like John Cena who I don't get along with, um, and it just so happens that he's not a person who He's not a personality that I, um, that I get on with very well." Barrett reiterated these claims in a 2014 interview with DNA India, saying, "...he has been the face for 10 years, and he's really good at what he does. But everyone knows that I don't like John Cena, and he doesn't like me either. Either way, everyone has an opinion about him, I respect that. Personally, I don't like him, and he doesn't like me. We are not friends." On his podcast, Conversation with the Big Guy, Ryback would often make claims that Cena was poisonous to the wrestling business, saying, I think he did so much harm for so long to new talent that was breaking out up there, and I had my experiences up there and other talent had their experiences." Ryback claimed Cena had a problem with the huge reactions Ryback was getting during his undefeated streak, and contends Cena worked to have him moved down the card. Ryback even made the bizarre claim that Triple H started NXT to protect young wrestlers from being buried by Cena. He said, I think Hunter finally had to say, what the f do I need to do? And I think he started with the NXT thing and is bringing up all these NXT guys and protecting the f out of them. Cena has been surpassed now, and so Hunter's brilliant if that's what he did to get rid of the f***ing Cena problem. In 2008, news came out that John Cena and Mickie James were dating. Not too long after, Cena announced that he was engaged to his high school sweetheart Elizabeth Huberdeau, whom he would marry in May 2009 and then divorce in 2012. In October 2009, James was moved from Raw to SmackDown. The Wrestling Observer's Dave Meltzer reported at the time that this was because James couldn't handle that Cena had broken up with her and that she was annoying certain people backstage on Raw because she was too upset about the breakup. Over the years, it appears any tension between Cena and James faded. They both worked on the SmackDown brand in 2016. On a 2017 episode of the Making Their Way to the Ring podcast, James acknowledged the relationship and said she looked forward to working with Cena's then-girlfriend Nikki Bella. She said, we're all adults, and you know, obviously this business is what it is. We've all had our share of relationships failed. I'm sure that I'm going to have to work with Nikki in the ring, and I know that we could do some really amazing stuff." Kenny Dykstra was dating Mickie James before news of her relationship with John Cena came out. Dykstra says he found out that James was cheating on him when he found her searching online about rumors of her dating Cena. According to Dykstra, when he confronted her, James broke down in tears and admitted everything. Dykstra also claimed that Cena was cheating on Huberdeau with James. Dykstra claims that he was moved to SmackDown earlier in the year so that Cena and James could continue to fool around on Raw. He tweeted in 2012, "...Cena was messing with MJ, so I got moved to SmackDown so they could further mess. I jobbed, got fired. When MJ got crazy because he wouldn't date her, she then got fired. Weird biz, huh?" Dykstra said he reported Cena and James' secret relationship to WWE management, which angered Cena even more. Dykstra wrote, "...I made mention of him sleeping with MJ, and he probably thought I wouldn't say anything, but I did, and he is mad." Alex Riley looked to be on course for big things in WWE. When he turned against The Miz, he caught a huge reaction from the crowd, and it seemed he was ready for a main event push. But it never happened, and John Cena was apparently the reason. There were rumors of Cena not liking Riley as soon as Riley hit the main roster. One reported reason for their beef happened at the 2012 Royal Rumble, when Riley accidentally got himself eliminated from the match before he could do his planned spots with Cena. In an interview with Chris Van Vliet, Riley explained, You know, I, I think it came down to, really at the end, like two men just not liking each other. Riley added that the personal dislike ended up having a negative impact on his career. He said he tried to make amends with Cena, but to no avail. There was one mistake that either I made or he made where we got really crossed, and we kind of got into a little bit of an argument. I went to him immediately the next day and tried to apologize for whatever had happened. I think he was pretty offended. Chris Masters had a pretty meteoric rise, roughly concurrent with John Cena's first WWE Championship reign. Masters claimed he felt that Cena didn't want to work with him and that Cena was vocal about not liking his matches. Speaking on the Two Man Power Trip podcast, Masters said that he and Cena simply didn't have a good rhythm together, and that may have prevented Cena from wanting to work with him. He also admitted to having some issues with Cena, too. Masters said, "...I just felt like Cena just didn't take too much pleasure working with me, and maybe he felt like I didn't give him enough of a chance, so I don't know." Oops, I'm breaking the fourth wall.
During CM Punk's famous 2011 pipe bomb promo, he said to Cena, I don't hate you, John. I don't even dislike you. I do like you. I like you a hell of a lot more than I like most people in the back. I hate this idea that you're the best. But Freddie Prinze Jr., who worked in WWE Creative during that time, said on his podcast, Wrestling With Freddie, that things were a little more complicated than that. Prince claimed that while Punk didn't hate John Cena personally, he hated everything he represented, the superhero character that always wins. He also hated that the company seemed complacent to never do anything different. Prince recounted a relevant conversation with Triple H, saying, I remember one time Hunter saying, as different as they are, the reason Punk hates John so much is because he knows if he was in that same spot, he would act the exact same way. This is over a decade ago, and to hear the rumblings of AEW basically saying he's acting the way John Cena did back then is just like, I mean, damn near everything I disagreed with Hunter on. He was right.